brethren and sisters, I have talked straight to you today. I know I will be abused by some for what I have said, but I want my skirts to be clean. A watchman, what of the night, is the cry of the faithful. I have tried to warn you of the darkness that is moving over us and what we can do about it if we will only follow the prophet. Have you counted the cost? If our countrymen, and especially the body of the priesthood, continue to remain complacent, misled though some of our, through some of our news media, deceived by some of our officials, and perverted by some of our educators, are you prepared to see some of your loved ones murdered, your remaining liberties abridged, the Church persecuted, and your eternal reward jeopardized? I have personally witnessed the heart-rending results of the loss of freedom. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have been close to the godless evil of the socialist-communist conspiracy on both sides of the Iron Curtain, particularly during my years as European Mission President at the close of the war and today, and also during my eight years in the Cabinet. It may shock you to learn that the first communist cell in government, so far as we know, was organized in the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the 1930s. John Apt was there. It was John Apt whom Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, requested for his attorney. Harry Dexter White was there. Lee Pressman was there. And Communist Alger Hiss, who was the principal architect and first secretary of the United Nations Organizing Committee, committee was there also. I have talked face to face with the godless communist leaders. It may surprise you to learn that I was host to Mr. Khrushchev for a half day when he visited the United States. Not that I'm proud of it. I opposed his coming then, and I still feel it was a mistake to welcome this atheistic murder as a state visitor. But according to President Eisenhower, Khrushchev had expressed a desire to learn something of American agriculture. And after seeing Russian agriculture, I can understand why. <laughs> As we talked face to face, he indicated that my grandchildren would live under communism. After assuring him that I expected to do all in my power to assure that his and all other grandchildren will live under freedom, he arrogantly declared in substance, You Americans are so gullible. No, you won't accept communism outright, but we'll keep feeding you small doses of socialism until you'll finally wake up and find you already have communism. We won't have to fight you. We'll so weaken your economy until you fall like overripe fruit into our hands. And they're ahead of schedule in their devilish scheme.